On this particular day, we were actually on our way back across country and we're driving by in the middle of the day. So it was like, well, geez, let's pull in there and see if we can catch some fish. So we did. It was like 100 degrees that day, much like right now here at Horsetooth Reservoir, it's extremely hot. That particular day was very, very hot. And I believe it was about 10.30 or 11 by the time we put the boat in the water. And we fished till like two in the afternoon. So the worst possible time that you could be there at the lake. I put the boat in the water, looked around at the graph real quick and surmised that right here in front of the boat ramp, uh, I was marking just a couple of fish on the side imaging that were told me they were either carp or walleyes. And the lake has a very high population of carp. We had in fact encountered those last time we were there with Ronnie in the wind. Um, I knew the walleyes, or the, excuse me, the carp were in big numbers. So when I saw the graph light up with some fish right away on the sand flat just south of the boat ramp, then I'm like, well, maybe they're carp, but maybe they're not. And so I got all the finesse stuff out right away and started with the finesse jigs. And when you start jigging walleyes in June, you know, dog days of summer, if you do it well, you're going to get some of them to bite. There's no question about that. That's the second cast with the Pro Swim Shad. Uh, and so far I have made, and there you go, that's what we're looking for right there, guys. We'll go ahead and let him make things easy on ourselves. And they should get a lot bigger than that. But that's my second cast with the Pro Swim Shad right there. And I uh, rotated through a couple different baits first thing. Uh, just trying to figure out which one would get us bit. We're not sure if it's a location or whatever. And there you go, there is a perfect one to get us started first thing here in the morning. We're gonna put him back. We'll hope for some bigger ones than that. They've gotta be 15 inches in here to keep, uh, you can't keep any, or you can keep one over 21 inches. But uh, here's a little bait. I've got it on a 3 16 ounce jig head and uh, that little pro swim shad and I'm just swimming it along. And there's a couple different retrieves that came into play that day. Maybe a half dozen different baits that came into play that day as well. I also threw a hard bait. I threw a little flicker shad. And the reason I threw the flicker shad was thinking, well, if they'll go on this, I can cover more water. I miss less fish. Um, it's just a really good way to put a lot of fish in the boat if they'll, if they'll hit it. That one bit right at the boat. Right as I go to pick the bait up out of the water, he got it right here at the boat. So now we've been bit on the pro shad and the flicker shad. So a hard bait and a soft bait. Uh, in both cases, the bait's ticking just right at the bottom. This one, I sped it up. When I went to wind it to the boat, he grabbed it. So again, we're still looking for bigger ones than that, but that's a good sign. Um, there's the little flicker shad right there, guys. It's a, in the pro color, uh, real hot color, so hopefully the fish can see it. Now, he bit it right out here at the boat, so we've been bit in as shallow as a couple of feet, and, uh, and then all the way out here as deep as five feet. So we'll keep playing with our depth ranges. They bit it, but they didn't bite it as well as they bit the jigs. And I think that came down to the wind. Uh, if the wind had been blown a little bit more, the hard bait would be a better choice. But when the wind's real slick, then the jig is a better choice because I am in 100% control of the action. I don't have a distinct vibration put off. If I want that jig to be snap jig up and down, which we did a ton of with the gold minnow on this show, I can do that. And then I've got a bait that's hopping aggressively up and down like this. That can be a great way to trigger bites. For sure, there's a better one here, guys, I believe. Hard to tell, we're catching a lot of them, and some of them are more ambitious than others. Uh, pretty good walleye bite we got going, or saw guy bite we got going right here, guys. Come on, buddy, come on over here. <laughs> That's a little guy. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. There's the bright jig again. Look at the color of the water. That's why, and if that fish will disappear. You can see that jig. If you watch it under the surface of the water, once it goes under a foot, you can't even see it. And that's a ridiculously bright color. And when it's a foot underwater, you can't see it. That's why it's such a bright color. I also think that that's why these fish are biting so well in the middle of the day, is because the water is so stained that even as a, a saw guy walleye, they don't care. Conversely, I also got them to go doing the Bernie, which is basically the stop and go retrieve. We call it the Bernie. It's a homage to Bernie Keefe, the former lake trout guide here in Colorado. You guys may have seen him on the show. Basically, you point the rod right at the bait, let it sink all the way to the bottom with the jig. In this case, it was a little pro shad, swim shad, but you could do it with a, with a little power, power swimmer. There's a variety of different baits you could, you could do, the little Berkeley swim baits, that would do just fine for that. I like the pro shad as one of the best. The deal also works really good. The, the power bait, the deal also works really good. But you point the rod right at it, wind it three or four times real quick, and then kill it, and just let the bait settle back to the bottom on tight line. In that case, it rises and then it angles down. 
and then it rises and then it angles down as opposed to snap jigging where it's doing this, the Bernie's doing this more. So it's a little bit of a hybrid retrieve of a vertical and a horizontal retrieve. That's an excellent way to get bites. And by the way, those are some of the most fun hook sets because you feel those fish because the, the line is semi-tight. You can watch the line. Some of them it'll just swim away, but a lot of them as that thing's going down, you'll get the real distinct walleye tick, give you a chance to set the hook and those are really fun hook sets. There's one right there, got that one on the first drop. And that feels like a better one right there, guys. I'm not really sure, and I've got him on my absolute favorite rod. He might not be any better than the other ones. No, he's not, but that's okay, we'll take him. They are fired up this morning, that's for sure. Come here, buddy. Now, and I know that we should be able to wade through tons of these. Look at the body conditioning on that. Look how fat that little saw guy is. Come out of there. Look how fat the belly on that guy is. See if we can get him turned. That's a fat little fish right there, guys. And obviously we're looking for bigger ones than that. But that little swim shad, I found the right bait. I rotated through a gulp minnow, a ripple shad, a jigging, gulp jigging grub, and uh, I guess that's it. And then the pro shad and already got bit. So that's a good sign, guys. We've been fishing the boat ramps right there. We're 50 yards down the bank from where we started. Doing the stop and go retriever, the Bernie, you get a, probably a higher hookup percentage for sure than the snap jig, but you're also in the strike zone less time. So if your fish are spread out over more area, it's a better technique. And that's why I used it so much on this particular episode, because we're fishing a big sand flat. There's nothing really to snag, not much on it to snag. According to my Lawrence unit, there's almost nothing on it. It's a big sand flat. But we fished that day from the boat ramp to the inlet and back over and over again and that's it and that's only a maybe a three four hundred yard stretch of the of the lake we never left that section of the lake the inlet's got the only real distinct structural element in the lake which there's a very subtle roll as it drops into the floor of the inlet uh, when i identified that on the graph i had no prior knowledge of that when i identified that on the graph and we got a couple of bites there right off the bat then i could concentrate on it and why did we leave the first question is well why would you pull off of that then I had to rest them and let the fish reset. And by that, I mean leave a couple hundred yards away, a hundred yards away, let all the walleyes reset on that little roll down into the inlet. And then I could come back and make a couple of accurate throws and catch fish. And that always isn't communicated on the main show because we can't talk about everything that happens on the show. But the reality is it's very common for us, particularly in the snap jigging scenario, to leave a group of fish and let them sit for 10 or 15 minutes and then pull right back on them. Maybe we'll go you know, drink some water, have a sandwich, do something with the camera, whatever we gotta do, maybe rig some tackle, and then pull right back on them and get them to bite again. And I've had that same scenario, guys, on smallmouth bass, I've had it on largemouth bass. Anytime I've got fish on offshore structure, if I can rest them for a few minutes and let them reset on the structure they're on, I can catch more of them. And there's a very isolated little roll in that section of the lake right there. And as long as I concentrated that, I caught plenty of fish. There you go. Now that was really little. Holy schmoly, geez. No wonder that was a subtle bite. Uh, that's for sure. The smallest one I've ever seen. <laughs> he'd look good in my fish tank, wouldn't he? Highly illegal, but man, he'd look cool in there. That's funny, guys. We, uh, that one, I literally, I'm doing what I call the Bernie retrieve and it just barely ticked it. And I was like, oh, there's a real subtle bite. Well, I wonder why it was a real subtle fish. The Bernie retrieve, I'm doing a tip down right now and we call it the Bernie, but it's just a quick wind and then kill. And the bait just pendulums towards you and your rod tip never really moves. And that way you're always in the right position to detect what's going on and feel what's going on. And I watch the line. As soon as the line goes slack, I know the baits hit the bottom again. And so it keeps me in constant contact with the bottom. That fish right there, little tiny fish, but you still give a good clean bite or a good clear feel on the bite. Real subtle, but you get a clear feel on the bite. 